Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace of mind. You never know. Then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for your name. together please the Bible says and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the are called according to his purpose let me read it again and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose father thank you for this Bible study tonight here on Wednesday night Help us, Heavenly Father, to learn the importance of loving God the way that we should. I pray, Heavenly Father, you'll bless this service, and I pray, Heavenly Father, you'll help us as we live going through this time of, of COVID-19, uh, and so that we'll get it over with, that it'll slow down, that we'll be able to get back in church the way that we should. It was so good to be in church last Sunday. And I just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will help us to learn the importance and the appreciation that we ought to have for the church of the living God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All things working together for good. 
You see, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Lee Robertson, pastor of the Highland Park Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, one of the greatest men I have ever knew. In fact, he was the founder and chancellor of Tennessee Temple University when I was attending there back in the early 1970s. Dr. Robertson had a child born that died in her crib. Her name was Joy. Joy was the joy of his life, but she died. I remember that story being told how he came home and to the death of his daughter and he cried out to God, Oh my God, my God, I have done so much for you. Why have you taken my daughter? The verse came to him, all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Mr. Robertson, Dr. Robertson had to ask himself, do you love God? Do you love God? During that time, multitudes of people that went to school at Tennessee Temple had seen uh, or heard of the dilemma Dr. Robertson was going through and they thought they would help him and they sent money. Dr. Robertson took that money and bought a camp. And he called that camp, Camp Joy. That was the daughter's name, Joy. Camp Joy, and the money that came in every year for Camp Joy, every child went to camp free of charge. Every year, thousands saved. Thousands were saved at Camp Joy. Many young men were called into the ministry. Missionaries were called out of Camp Joy. So all things did work together for the good. You see, ladies and gentlemen, without the death of the little joy, there would have been no camp joy where thousands were saved and uh, prepared for the ministry uh, and uh, became missionaries and um, uh, to go to foreign fields. All these things would have happened had not little joy died. So many stories you could tell like that in the Bible. But the key to it was the question that Dr. Robertson asked himself. Do you, do you love God? And he was referring to himself. Do you love God? How much do you love God? That is the question I'd like to ask you today. Did you know I'm going to give you some things real quick in this Bible study tonight? One, all things are yours. Did you know that? All things are yours. The Bible says whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours and ye are Christ and Christ is God. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, all things belong to us. Do you know that? Everything that Jesus has is ours. That we are joint heirs with him. Did you know that? We are in the family of God. Jesus receives an inheritance. We also receive that inheritance. All things. All things are ours. Uh, I like that. Uh, I like that. Uh, when one of these days Jesus comes, one of these days that he'll set up a millennial reign for a thousand years, we're going to be able to rule and reign over things that are ours. We're going to be working for God for eternity. We're going to have eternity later on. For eternity, we'll be able to witness the new heaven, the new earth, all the things that God has given us. All things are ours. Number two, did you know that all your needs are supplied? And by the way, you remember what I'm telling you comes forth because of your love for God. All things, all your needs are supplied. You know what? Every one of my needs I have have been supplied. God has taken care of me. Over the years of pastoring this church, the Bible says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. I have pastored this church. God has provided my finances. God has provided my clothing. I've had people in my church, God's people have bought my glasses. They have put food on the table, shoes on my feet, cars to drive. 
gasoline in my car, a home to live in, all of my things that I've ever needed. God has taken care of for me. God is so good. And by the way, you can take a person who's not in the ministry. God will supply all their needs too, according, remember, it's according. Do you love God? Well, say, well, God should take care of me. Yeah, but do you love God? Don't ask him to take care of you, and he probably won't, unless you love God. All your needs, but my God shall supply. My God is the great supplier. <laughs> he can supply everything that you need in life. My peace of mind, God supplies it. Love, God supplies it. Grace, God supplies it. All these things, faith, your faith grows as God supplies it. God shall supply all your needs. Number three, the third thing tonight. All grace abounds toward us. Here's the verse. The Bible says, And God is able to make all grace, all grace abound toward us that ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work, 2 Corinthians 9 and verse number 8. My God is able to make all grace abound. Now, grace is an amazing thing. Aren't you glad for the grace of God? Aren't you glad for the grace of God? You got something you didn't deserve. You got salvation. You didn't deserve that. See, you're a sinner. You deserve to go to hell, according to the Bible. The wages of sin is separation or death. Death separated from God. How would you like to be eternally separated from God? Well, if you would be, you'd be in hell for eternity. But God supplies your grace. How about the grace to forgive? The grace to love? The grace to care? How about that grace that you give people when they've done something to offend you or hurt you? And you've forgiven them because of the grace of God. God's grace is able and abounds toward us. When I was saved in 1963, I was saved by the grace of God. I did not deserve to be saved. But God seen my heart. He seen my repentance. He seen my faith. And his mercy and grace abounded toward me. What a wonderful Savior we have. Did you know that number four, all things are done through Christ? Here's what the Philippians 4 again says. All I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I can do anything I want to with God's help. I was told I couldn't build a church out in the country. Well, it's been built. How do you build that church? God helped me. God helped me. All things can be done. You see, I'm telling folks right now, you can keep your marriage together if you want to. All things, all things, I can do all things through Christ. I can keep my, I can, hey, by the way, I can raise my family. I can have good kids. I can raise them right. But you got to do it. All things uh, we can do through Christ. We can't do nothing through our own flesh. We'll fail. But you will not fail if you do things through Christ. Christ will teach you. He will show you how you can do things. If you want the help. We got people today. By the way, do you know why pride is something God hates worse than anything? Because most people won't ask nothing, nobody for nothing. I can do it on my own. No, you can't. We want to succeed. Get God to help you. He will help you. I can do all things through Christ. You can't do that, Sandy. Why not? Well, the world says you can't. Yeah, but God says I can. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing, this COVID-19. Listen to me. God knew about it years before it ever happened. Did you know that God is not a God of fear? Don't let the world scare you to death. My goodness, every morning you get up, you have a chance to die. Nobody thinks about that. But now the world has got you scared to death that you're going to get something that will cause your death. If you're a Christian, so what? You can the world can't scare me with heaven. If I get it, I get it. I'm not going to try to get it. 
I'm going to try to obey the, the rules, but I'm not going to let the government tell me I need to be afraid of it. God is not a God of fear. Here's what God said. To fear God is the beginning of wisdom. Fear whether or not you're, you're uh, serving him and you're uh, pleasing him with your faith and with your love toward him. Worry about how you well, how you are in uh, uh, relationship with God. Don't worry about COVID-19. Every military soldier that ever went to the military to knew and knew every day he woke up he could die that day. When you get in your car, you know you could die that day. You know you could have a heart attack. You don't know when you're going to have a heart attack. But let me tell you what, you don't live a life of fear. God is not a God of fear. Remember that. He will supply all your needs. He will take care of you. Have you asked him? The world don't ask God because they don't believe in him. The world is one of your troublemakers, remember? The world, the flesh, the devil, they're one of your troublemakers. Don't let the world scare you to death. Remember, God's on the throne. He knows all about it. He knows whether or not you love him or not. All things, did you know this, are to be also inherited. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Revelation 21 and verse number 7. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall Thou shalt condemn, this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Isaiah 54, 17. Let me tell you something. I'm going to inherit some things. Now, let me tell you something. When my father died, I never inherited anything. When my stepfather died, I never inherited anything. When my mother died, I did not inherit a thing. We came from poor family. We didn't have much. But I want you to know I have a father in heaven that owns it all. I'm going to inherit things from him. You know why he loves me? You know what? It's all about your love toward God. You can't get any things I've been talking about here tonight. Unless you love God. If you love God, show him you love him. You don't show God you love him by showing up at his place about once a year or twice a year or something like that. Go to church regularly. Show God he's important to you. That he's part, that He's given you so much. Look, he died for you. Are you living for him? That's the question. Nobody else died for you. Don't take God for granted. Don't take God like and use him as a spare tire. You get a flat man, you pull out of God. God, I need some help here. No, you need help every day of your life. He'll supply all your needs if you love him. You can call on him. He'll be there for you. You'll inherit from him. Only, though, if you love him. We are conquerors, by the way, in all things. Conquerors. You know, I love it when I see victories. You don't know how many people in all the years I've been preaching, nearly 50 years now. All those years. I have seen men who were drunkards turn their lives over to God and quit drinking. People who, people who lived ungodly lives clean their lives up and give it over to God because he, he, God's a conqueror. He'll help you. He'll, he'll help you conquer your fears. He'll help you conquer your habits, your addictions. God is a great helper. I'll tell you one thing. We are conquerors in all things. I, I've had problems in my life. I needed help. God helped me conquer that problem. He'll help you too. Are you letting him? If you have a problem, hey look, if you have a problem with cigarettes, cigarettes, you say, well that won't send you to hell. I know that. It just, it'll make you smell like you've been there, maybe. I don't know, but I know this. You wanna break that habit, you say, I can't break it. You can. Turn it over to God. Turn it over to God. He'll help you conquer it. Drinking the same way. Uh, if you're hooked on drugs, God can help you conquer that. If you have, some, if you have a moral problem, God will help you handle that. God will help you because he'll help you conquer it. If you love him. You know, you got to love him. That's the key. All things working together for God 
who loved him. I, and we know that all things work together for God, for the good, to them that love God. They'll work together for the good if you love God. Do you love him? I mean, I don't say just to say you love him. Do you really love him? Have you turned over things that you need to turn over to him and say, here it is, Lord. I've had people that have had a burden I got. Turn that burden over to God. Turn it over to him. He wants it. Give it to him. Don't keep it when he wants it. He'll take care of you. He'll take care of your children. He'll take care of your burdens. He'll take care of everything. We are conquerors in all things. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Remember that love. Love's the key. Love doesn't fail. Everything else does. Love does not fail. Love's important. It's an action word. God said, let me show you I love you. Let me show you I can take care of that problem for you. Let me show you I can help you. Let me show you how much you really, really need me. Yes, sir. Dr. Robertson said, what have I done that you would take my daughter? Oh, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Robertson sees his daughter again. In fact, Dr. Robertson has since passed and is with his daughter Joy in heaven. But there's a lot of people that receive joy on this earth because of a little joy born to a preacher who loved God. Now for a minute there, his, he had to ask himself, how much do I love God? For a minute there, his faith was uh, having a problem. But he said, Lord, I love you. I'm turning this over to you. I'm going to trust you. I'm asking you out there to do the same thing. Every one of you here. Every one of you that are watching let me tell you something. Have faith in God. Trust Him. There is only one condition in this text. That one condition that we just read in Romans 8, 28. Only one condition is that we love God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, the Bible says. Here it is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us. Practice His love. Fall in love with him. Fall in love with him. Don't worry about the world, the world, the flesh, the devil. They hate you. But God loves you. And God will work out things for you for the good. If and only if you love him. Father, thank you for this night's lesson to the hearts of these people. I pray that you'll bless them, guide them, and direct them. And I pray, Heavenly Father, they'll love you with all their hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.